All right, hi everybody, my name's Amelia and welcome back to the channel. Okay, so I know I have the microphone, but this is not going to be a monologue Monday. Actually, I just had a lot of thoughts on my mind and I wanted to talk about it, I wanted to express it, and so that's what we're gonna do. So before we really dive into these controversial hot takes, because I, I know you saw the thumbnail and the title, but before we get into that stuff, I kind of wanted to talk for like a few seconds on why this is important to me today. Before I got back onto YouTube, I had like this long break and I know I've mentioned it a lot and I'm so sorry that I keep mentioning it. Um, but during that time, I had so many spiritual revelations that completely shifted my perspective on a like just a, a lot of stuff. I have said it before, I'm not the same person that I was, and while I have dove, dove in? Dive in? What? While I've dove deeper into my spiritual beliefs, I have kept some of my existing beliefs, but other ones have mutated or changed or like sort of alchemized themselves. And anyway, I figured that this is a great way to kind of start diving into this and these are things I'm just I just am passionate about. Now before we get into the hot takes I just want to point out that some of these hot takes are not necessarily mine. Um, I just wanted to talk about them so I'll let you guys know which ones um, are like my hot take like I have this opinion or I share it and which ones are not but we'll, we'll you'll get there you'll see it. Anyway before we begin please be sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more spiritual topics like this and let me know down in the comments below if you are interested in having these spiritual uh, discussions because it's something that I, I'm interested in and I really want to keep doing. Um, so yeah this is going to be kind of a chit chatty video so be sure to grab something to drink um, and sit back and relax or if you're like me pretend it's podcast and start doing chores like no tomorrow because that's that's how I get my chores done. Okay, so my first hot take that I have is that tarot is a worldly tool and it is worldly in its nature. And while it can lead you and guide you to the otherworldly or the spiritual, tarot in and of itself is very much based in reality. And this is my opinion. This is my hot take. So I know a lot of people talk about tarot as being a way to dive into your inner psyche, your shadow work, and it's a way of connecting with your higher self, connecting with yourself even, just at its base level. And tarot is ultimately a tool of self-discovery. Um, and a lot of people really like it for spiritual purposes. So I am a tarot reader. I do offer tarot readings for other people. And one thing I have sort of kind of come to a conclusion with is while yes, tarot helps you with your like psyche and helps you with your shadow work and stuff like that. I personally think tarot is a very real like it, it's it's based in reality, not in the spiritual. I know that's going to be crazy because I have this whole channel about tarot and I talk about spirituality and such, but I really genuinely have this opinion. Now, let me explain why. So tarot sort of follows a story through the major arcana. It also depicts a lot of archetypes that we have within our lives. And as you look into the stories of the minor arcana, so that would be like pentacles, swords, wands, cups, those things. If you look at those, those are very worldly stories. They are not stories that I would say are spiritual. Can they be? I guess, sure. Yeah, but when we're reading tarot, or at least when I read tarot for people, it's always about worldly concerns. I rarely have people coming to um, get advice from a tarot reader um, or a psychic about spiritual um, exploration. Everybody wants to know about how their relationship is going to go. They want to know if they're going to get that job promotion. They want to know if they should quit their job. They want to know if they should pursue an entirely different career or if they should try a passion or sometimes people come in and they're like plagued with nightmares and they're sad and they're stressed and they have to address past traumas and that's a very real like grounded in reality sort of conversation. And while, yes, shadow work is sort of internal, you know, you can connect that with the higher self, you can connect that with the internal psyche, you can even connect that to a spiritual sense, I tend to find that people um, prefer a more based in reality solution and people don't really want to turn to the divine for answers. They actually want tangible uh, solutions and that's fine. I mean, honestly, that's how I use the tarot. So I'm not judging here. I'm just saying that my experience as a tarot reader, providing readings, as well as just doing it for myself, tarot is very based in reality. I also do not use the tarot in truth to connect with 
spirit. I don't use it to connect with God or the divine. Um, it kind of can. It's a stretch to say it, but it kind of can. Um, but I personally don't do that. Tarot for me is a very tangible, how do I handle reality sort of thing. And sometimes, you know, you get cards like the hermit or something or the high priestess. And the answer is like, okay, well, reality is not going to solve your problems. Please turn inwards, talk to the divine, go connect with spirit, go out in nature, that sort of thing to resolve your issues. But again, the question and the topics being discussed are very worldly in my opinion. So it is a hot take on this because a lot of people, tarot readers especially that I talk to, very much look at tarot as a spiritual thing. It's a spiritual tool after all. Um, you know, it's while it is a tangible deck, there is some element of connecting with your higher self and with spirit and trusting in the divine because, you know, you're pulling cards and there are 78 cards. There are, I believe, I'm doing the math off the top of my head, 156 different positions if you read reversals. So that is a lot of options. And of course, you know, two cards together creates a different meaning than two other cards together. So like, for example, if I see, say, the three of pentacles paired with the five of wands, I'm going to say, okay, conflict in the workplace in some team environment, is that's apparently happening or will happen. Um, versus saying like the five of wands and then pairing that with, say, the three of swords. Well, now suddenly it's become um, some issue that you've had with someone that has led to, this conflict has led to a sense of heartbreak. This is obviously very basic and I'm just spitting out cards here. Uh, it would be very different depending on what the question was and the person in the reading, but yeah, that's the basics. You get the idea. And so it does sort of change depending on what cards fall together. So the fact that there are so many combinations, there are 156 ways one card can, well, you know, any one card could fall out. I guess not just one, but like if you're if you're shuffling, there's 156 things that could happen when that card falls um, and you don't know what card it's going to be. So there is a sense of connecting to the divine, trusting spirit, and really taking a spiritual approach to tarot, at least in that regard. But when it comes to the actual topics being addressed, it's almost never spiritual. It's never like who is God? <laughs> what does God look like? Uh, what does the afterlife look like? And even if you did get answers with that with the tarot, you know, it's ultimately going to be left up to interpretation and it's going to look different for everybody. And, you know, the tarot is going to probably turn the conversation towards what you can work on, at least in my experience. Um, the tarot almost always seems to be a tool for helping you in your current situation, uh, helping you with your future decisions, and it's ultimately a very reality-based thing. So that's my hot take. Tarot is a reality tool, not a spiritual tool. Granted, it, it obviously requires some belief and some spiritual um, belief systems to back it up, but, you know, as far as what it does, that's my hot take. And the reason that I'm saying it like this is because when I think of things that I can do spiritually to connect, especially recently. Like I said, I took months off. A lot of stuff happened and I am not comfortable sharing it yet online. I might share it at some point. Um, there's some ghost stories to be involved here, just letting you know. Um, but even I am still in a place of disbelief. Call it my Capricorn rising. I don't know what it is, but I tend to be kind of a skeptic and a critic of a lot of spiritual stuff. So um, it's a little strange. I find myself laughing when people ask me, how does the tarot work and how do you know it works? How do you believe in it? And I'm like, honestly, I don't know. I want a logical answer. That Capricorn rising in me really wants a logical answer. Uh, and I just don't get one. So <laughs> because of my experience, experiences recently. I have viewed tarot entirely different than I had before. Um, I've also sort of changed my opinions on astrology as well. And it's not like anything grandiose. I still value both and obviously I still use both and we'll talk about both. Um, it's just my opinions of them have shifted based on my personal experiences and I don't find tarot to be something that helps me connect with the divine. It doesn't seem to help others connect with the divine as much. It can kind of push you in that direction like High Priestess moment, go trust your intuition and go explore that side of reality. But in and of itself, the topics that are discussed in the tarot are worldly and they have worldly archetypes, worldly things that while maybe a reflection of what is in the divine um, is not in and of itself a divine and spiritual thing. So I hope that makes sense. Anyway, we're moving on to controversial take number two.
Okay, so this hot take is actually just a question, and it's something I want to talk about, and I'll probably go into it in another video in just, like, a deeper context, um, but I don't know how I feel about this, so I'll, let me, let me just read the questions. So, the first, they're, they kind of go together. The first is, do we choose our fate before birth, and do we choose the sorts of challenges that we will face in life? Now, this is controversial, and I will explain why. Um, in case you're listening to it and you're like, okay, so the question was, do we choose our life path or what we'll experience in our lives before birth? How can that be controversial? Well, it's controversial because it can easily be used as a manipulation tactic by spiritual leaders uh, or even just people in that sort of uh, belief system. It can be used as a manipulation tactic to blame a victim for something that happened to them. And by victim, I'm talking about someone who's a victim of like a horrendous crime or um, some really like what we would all consider like an evil act on them. Um, for example, let's say that uh, you experience this like tragic fire uh, in your in your house or whatever, and your whole house burns down. Like, did you choose to have that experience? Because at this point, we're now we're now we're victim blaming. We're saying that well, you chose that horrible thing to happen to you before you came to life, like before you came to reality. <laughs> and I totally see where that comes into play. And I can see how that can easily be manipulated or have people manipulate that ideology and hurt others. Now, I want to give you some background on this. So before, before the last year, um, I had heard this question. I had thought about it a little bit and I was like, you know, okay, maybe um, there is some truth to this. Like maybe we do choose some of the challenges, maybe not the specifics, but like the theme. So for me, um, I've had a lot of hardship with my relationship to money. It has totally uh, imbalanced my root chakra. Like it has really messed me up. And I, it took a lot of um, shadow work and meditations and healing the root chakra and doing all this stuff to <laughs> try to combat my issues with money. And it's sort of a, a cycle I'm stuck in. And I, I still have some issues with it. So um in that way, I have experienced poverty on and off uh, throughout my life, and even though it doesn't seem like it, uh, maybe online, I, I have experienced that stuff. And interestingly enough, I I don't know if I would disagree necessarily that I that my soul chose to experience loss in a financial sense or struggle in a financial financial sense. I, I don't know if I would disagree if someone told me your soul chose this. I think I would be like, yeah, honestly, it's starting to look like it considering that I'm stuck in some karmic cycle here. So in that way, I would sort of agree. But in other ways, I sort of disagree because I personally think we have free will and I do think that there is a lot of evil running rampant in the world and people do bad things and they hurt others and it is not fair and I don't think it's always decided or predestined before birth. That's my own personal opinions on it, but it is a very controversial topic because there are religions out there and there are spiritual groups out there who believe that you chose your fate before you were born. It is a very common and widespread ideology, and it's also very common and widespread for people to disagree with it as well, because those people um, would say that it's sort of helping to encourage this manipulation um, of the victim and make them feel bad and make it seem like their struggles are no longer valid or that they deserved it in some way. And I think that is also wrong. <laughs> so, Ultimately, you have to come to your own conclusions about this, but it is an interesting topic and I would love to dive into it more because there are parts of it that I think in some ways we do choose sort of the people that we uh, might meet in life. Um, we choose maybe the family we're born into. Uh, maybe we choose some of the themes that, we, that might follow us around for our life. I do think in some ways that's true and I also think in some ways that that's not true at all. Again, I, there is a bit of free will in here as well. I personally believe that we have. And so therefore, I don't think that 
every bad thing that happens to you is something you chose to happen to you before you were born. So again, I might go into a longer conversation about this at some point, but I wanted to bring up this controversial hot take because it is something that is very widely discussed in spiritual spheres. And I wanted to know what you guys have um, as far as your opinions regarding this subject. Do you think that you chose your hardships or that people choose their hardships um, before birth? Or do you think it's something that just happens and um, that that idea is just not true? Like, what is your take on this fate versus free will discussion. Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you want a longer discussion on that because I will dive into it if if given the opportunity. Okay, so this next spiritual hot take. This one's interesting to me because I'm not super passionate about it. It's not a topic that I personally incorporate into my spiritual practice whatsoever. So the topic is that not everyone's ancestors are good and not everyone's ancestors are bad. That's kind of what I wrote down in my notes here. Basically, it's about ancestral work. I have seen a few videos recently where people talk about ancestral work. Like, I don't know how I feel about this because I don't think I view ancestor work quite the same. And I also don't work with my ancestors. Sorry, ancestors. I, I just don't. I don't personally participate in ancestral work. I don't, particip I don't participate in past life. Uh, work very much. Um, so it's it's a weird, it's, it's a controversial hot take, but it's it's like I'm looking at it from the outside in. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm, I'm looking at it, but it's not something that I participate in. So it's hard for me to have an opinion about it because I haven't looked into it and I haven't really incorporated it into my own practice. So I'm really not that passionate about it, but a lot of people are. So I'm going to break it down kind of in two different ways. So there is the take of ancestral work where you connect with your actual lineage and your actual ancestors. You can, there are many, many, many uh, cultures around the world that do this. It is a very common practice. It's just not something that I was raised to do. I don't really know how to do it and I'm just not that interested in it personally, but I do know a lot of people like it and are interested in it, especially people who are coming into the spiritual community who didn't have this sort of basis growing up and who want to connect to their ancestors. And then there is um, another kind of sphere of it where you can connect with your past lives, your past families, etc. Um, and that's sort of like an ancestral work, but probably leaning more on the reincarnation side. So I'm going to put that little box off to the side because I think what we should be talking about when it comes to ancestral work is like biologically your ancestors. I think that's how the majority of people view ancestral work. Now, there's a lot of debates going around um, about whether your ancestors are good or bad um, or whether your ancestors are willing to help you or not because your spiritual practices are not the same as theirs. For example, if I'm looking at my um, biology as in how I came to be <laughs> um, through the generations, you know, a lot of my ancestors were probably Catholic or Christian. I don't really know, to be honest. I haven't like looked into it too much, but I'm pretty certain that they fall into some branch of Christianity. It was probably Catholicism, but I genuinely don't know. I don't know what their opinions were. I don't know what their lives were like. I know a little bit about some of my ancestors. Um, some of my ancestors uh, immigrated over to the Americas, um, like between World War One and World War Two from Germany, but I don't know where my other ancestors necessarily came from because I my grandparents weren't very clear on that. But the point is, is that, you know, I don't know much about my ancestors, so I don't work with them. Um, but some people do spend a lot of time researching and stuff. But at the end of the day, are you going to be able to know exactly what your ancestors believed? It's hard to say. Um, and I think that um, it depends on the culture, but as somebody who's coming into it who hasn't had this practice before, their family never did it, uh, it can be tricky because you might ask your ancestors for help, say, with some spell or something, but if your ancestors were Christian, they would probably not help you with that. But I think that my problem with this hot take, actually, um, to bring it back to the conversation for a second, is that there is a lot of dispute about whether uh, certain people who are trying to practice ancestral work, whether they should be doing it at all. Um, and this is because it, there's this idea that your ancestors were not good people. And that is a hot take. I, again, don't have any strong opinions on it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> but I, I don't genuinely know what to 
say to that because I don't know how to practice with ancestors and I've never done it. I haven't looked into it. But there is a possibility that your ancestors were totally different from you and you would see them as bad. Um, maybe they actually were bad. Maybe they weren't. We don't know. Um, maybe they were like super devout in their belief system and yours completely contradicts it. Um, alternatively, maybe they weren't that devout and they don't really care. It's hard to say. And I personally have different views of the spiritual realm. I tend to believe the spiritual realm cares very, very little about um, reality as we see it, the things that we care about, the things that are in the tarot. The spiritual realm doesn't seem to be as interested in it. Again, I will go into that stuff maybe another day, but my point is, is that with ancestral work, we don't really know um, what our ancestors think of our current actions or what they really believed. Some people do. Some people do. Some people have like diaries and stuff from their ancestors or they um, have stories passed down through generations, but it depends on the practice that you're coming in. So I guess if you are someone who was born into a different religion and then transitioned to a more spiritual take and wanted to do ancestral work when your parents and grandparents had never done it, then it starts to get into the realm of what did your ancestors really believe and who were they? Anyway, my point on all of this is just saying that depending on how you view the spiritual world and depending on how you view uh, ancestral work, it could be good or bad or your ancestors could be good or bad. It's just really interesting how people argue about this all the time. And again, I'm coming from an outside perspective. I know nothing about ancestral work. I don't have any interest in working with my ancestors I'm sure you guys were great. Just don't have any interest in doing it personally, but it would be interesting to see what you guys think in the comments and uh, let me know your hot takes on the ancestral work. Okay, so moving on for my next hot take and this one is also my hot take and it's gonna kind of relate to my hot take that I had at the beginning where I said tarot is a reality tool or a system based in reality not in the otherworldly. I'm just going to read what I wrote this morning as I had my morning coffee and watched the birds at the bird feeder because that is honestly the pinnacle of, of enjoying life. Every day I'm so happy to be awake to watch the birds eat from the bird feeder and drink my coffee. It's amazing. If you haven't done it, do it, okay? I, I may be young, but it's amazing. Do it. That These grandparents were on to something. But anyway, here's what I wrote this morning. It says, Reality and the spiritual must be in balance like yin and yang. You cannot experience the spiritual without reality, but you cannot experience reality if you are too absorbed by the spiritual. So that's my hot take. I know it's kind of long, but let me break it down. So if you understand the concept of yin and yang, and I do um, really, really love this concept. It is such a beautiful thing. I know that there is also some controversy over practices that are outside of your scope. So for example, and I don't really want to touch on this too much because even though it is a controversial hot take, um, it's, it's, it's starting to get too controversial for me. So, but there is a hot take that depending on where you grow up and depending on the religion that you're born into, that is what you are confined to and you are not allowed to um, experience others, mostly because when it comes to uh, like the hippie revival or the spiritual revival, um, there's a lot of cultural appropriation and a mishmash of conflicting ideas. So for example, the idea of a Christian witch. And I know there are people out there who are Christian witches. And um, I, again, don't want to spend too long on this particular controversy because it's, again, a broader topic. It needs its own video, maybe like an hour long video at that point. And it's something that I'm just not interested in touching at the moment. But for the Christian witches, that sort of confl conflicts with both witches and Christians. So the idea is that you can't be a mishmash. You can't take what you like from other cultures because that waters down religion, if that makes sense. Um, and then also, there are a lot of people who believe that whatever you're born into, you got to stick with. So it, again, that's a huge controversy, but take what you will from it. That's not what we're talking about right now. But I am talking about how I really, really, really admire the concept of yin and yang. So while I don't personally practice any Taoist um, beliefs and I don't know a ton about it, I do really admire the concept of yin and yang and it is expressed in a lot of other cultures as well. Um, I think it's one of those like really old archetypes that just has prevailed and has followed humanity and it's honestly to me it feels so right and it seems so true that I'm not surprised that it has embedded itself in um, a lot of cultures and identities. So 
when I talk about that, I'm using that as um, a reference or an example of how you can understand what my overall controversial opinion or hot take is. Because I think a lot of people are familiar with the idea or the concept of yin and yang, which is that the good is within the bad, the bad is within the good sort of thing. Um, uh, there's a little bit of both in both, and it's in balance. I did a horrible job explaining that. I think you guys are familiar with the concept. So here's what I mean by the reality and the spiritual. So I think that reality is within the spiritual just as much as the spiritual is within reality. So we'll start with the spiritual being within reality because we experience reality every day. So right now you are experiencing reality. I'm experiencing reality, but I would not say that I am that I am personally experiencing the spiritual within reality at the moment, even though I'm talking about it. When I think of experiencing the spiritual within reality, I think of, you know, standing on the beach and staring at the ocean and just lost in your thoughts. I think of listening to the birds sing. I think of feeling the sun on your skin and really thinking about how that sun is on your skin right now and how it's warm and how, you know, it's like divine light that this is here. It's all a beautiful chance, you know, that we're all here, right? Yeah, you think about those things, like your existence, your very existence. Touching grass with your bare feet, thinks it makes me think of the spiritual. Um, exploring the woods and just walking through it, like basically anything with nature, makes me think of the spiritual within reality. Because if I'm walking through the city, I don't necessarily think of it. Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. Now, when I say the opposite, that there is the reality within the spiritual, I think of when you are doing meditation, there is a sense of reality. You're connect. You're still connected to reality despite being in meditation. And there is, whenever you are listening to music, that is your reality, but you might be in a state of flow listening to the music, and that is the spiritual connecting with you. And I wouldn't say that's the spiritual within reality. I would say that's very much the reality within the spiritual, because you're actively trying Maybe, maybe not with music, but you are actually trying with meditation to connect with the divine. And I think that you're still grounded and connected to reality despite it. And I think this is also true for when um, we look at tarot, especially because when you're reading the tarot, even though it's a spiritual tool and you're doing a spiritual thing, the concepts and the archetypes are based in reality. It is reality within the spiritual. I think both are very important. I think if you have an imbalance between reality and the spiritual, you will not find what you are seeking. And we all are looking for something, aren't we? So what I mean by this controversial hot take is that a lot of people get hooked on, we have to escape the matrix. We have to escape reality. We have to seek total enlightenment. We have to meditate for days to find enlightenment and then completely disconnect from reality. We have to disconnect from our bodies. And I think that sort of misses the point. This is my controversial hot take. That misses the point. I think maybe for some people that does work and that's the only way they can connect spiritually, but I don't think that's true for everyone and I don't think that you should completely reject reality. I think there is a reason that reality exists and there is a reason that we experience reality and spiritual almost separately um, most of the time, but I think that to completely sever yourself from reality misses the point. And, I, and same goes for spirituality. I think we all recognize that if you totally reject spirituality, you're missing something or you're missing the point. Now, there is something to be said about like atheists and the scientific boom and um, people not accepting spirituality or rejecting it due to atheism or like, you know, that belief system or like following uh, a more scientific and logical approach. And to each their own. Sure, go for it. My personal opinion on that, and again, controversial hot take here, is you're missing something when you do that. I personally think a spiritual journey is very important. How you explore your spiritual side is completely up to you, and I don't think anything is really right or wrong except true acts of moral evil, um, especially when it's intended to be evil or if it's done in selfish gain. That, I think, is wrong. But when it comes to just picking a religion, whether it's Hinduism, Christianity, Taoism, whatever it happens to be, I don't think you're wrong for choosing that path because I think all paths sort of lead to the same place, which is a connection to the divine. And there is generally this idea of enlightenment, of becoming the best self, of acting in moral goodness and in um, trying to connect with the divine in some way. But I do have a personal opinion and the hot take here that you cannot have one without the other. You cannot completely reject reality to 
be in the spiritual because then you're, it, it's just, it's out of balance now. And you cannot completely reject the spiritual to exist in reality. It's, you have to have both and both are within each other. This as within, so without sort of thing. And I would love to dive into this concept of as within, so without, and as above, so below, that whole idea. I would love to have a whole video on it. But for now, I just wanted to express that hot take because I do think that, at least for me and what I've experienced recently, it's just, I've found that I can either, I can neither reject one or the other. I must always have both and they must always be connected and within one another. And without that, then I am lost. And I think that even though this concept, or maybe I'm not expressing it super clearly, I hope that it's kind of coming across, but I, my personal take is that reality must be embedded in the spiritual and the spiritual must be embedded in reality. And that is why I really love the tarot, despite me saying earlier at the beginning of this video that I see it as a reality tool and not a spiritual tool. It helps you with reality. I don't think it helps you with the spiritual. I think it can guide you there, but it cannot take you further. You get to the threshold and then you're on your own. And I do think that's the difference maybe between reality and the spiritual is that the spiritual is a journey of solitude while the reality is a journey of the collective. So personal opinions here, but I thought it was interesting and I wanna know what you guys think about that as well. All right, so those are my hot takes. Those are my controversial topics that I wanted to bring up today. And I just wanted to know what you guys thought about it as well. And if you want me to deep dive into any of these topics, let me know because I do need to get on with my monologue Mondays <laughs> and sort of come up with um, some topics that I think you guys are gonna be really interesting in interested in and you know really dive into it so let me know what you guys think in the comments below and uh yeah i'm just super interested in this stuff so if you want to have more discussions about just spiritual topics um spiritual tools or just anything that i mentioned in this video let me know anyway thank you guys so much for watching and i hope to see you again next time